Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Now I'm going to start the section Power Tricks One of the Nuscon 2021. I'm Edson Wade, I'm the chair, and Marcos Pessoa is co chair of this session. Hello, everybody. Uh, be welcome to Nuscon 2021. Yes. It's moved to. Okay, sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Marinisi, and I re represent my work entitled Comparative Study of Control Methodologies and PL Topology to Enhance the Performance of Synchronization of Grid Type PV System. Hi, everyone. My name is Thiago. I'm a master's degree student on power electronics, and I will present the work in which it, which his title, which his title is Analysis and Comparison of Bridgeless Sepic Topologies Operating Discontinuous Conduction Mode for Power Factor Correction in Aircraft Power Systems. Hi everybody, my name is Everson Matos. I will present the robust control, uh, the robust autonomous control design procedure based on metal risks for a small satellite energy subsystem. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Chavez. I present the paper titled Modulation Technique for Common Mode Volt Reduction and Third Order Component Elimination for a Three Level T Type Inverter. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. I am Bernardo, a graduation student at UFIS, Federal University of Espírito Santo, and I will present my work, uh, Proportional Integral Model Predictive Control for a Back-to-Back -back Converter Based UPS. Okay, now I'm going to start the videos of the other presentations. In the EPL topology, the Zig. Hi, my name is Marinist, and I will present this work. To connect the system to the power grid, the energy generated must be equivalent in amplitude, phase, and frequency to the electrical grid. The device responsible for the synchronism is called phase look to look, and is shown in this figure. This work contributes by carrying out a comparative analysis of four three phase PL topologies using three different turning methods to obtain the gains of the system. The PL topology are synchronous reference frame, phase look to look, second order analysis integrated phase look to look, enhancement phase look to look, and predatory phase look to look. And the turning methods are Zinger Nichols, C, H, R, and ITA. Each topology was configured showing figure six and excited with an input step. KPS was empirically inverted to obtain an S-shaped signal at the output. With this curve, the transport delay parameters L and the time constant T were collected and applied in this table to obtain the KP and KE gains. The results obtained are shown in this table 4. Four tests were performed of the turning controller's gain, voltage seg test, frequency variation, phase variation, and harmonic filtering. Here are the answers for the 20% input voltage seg test. We observe that all topologies continue stable with no difference between the turning techniques. Now we see the result for the frequency variation. Here, the SRF response and SCOGI response have the best performance when the controller has turned by the Zig Nichols method, and the overshoot did not exceed 3%. In the EPL topology, the Zig Nichols and ITA methods have a similar performance and outperform CHR due to obtaining the L and T parameters. And the KPL LL topology, all control methodology present a similar performance with overshoot in 80%. After the disturbing section in the stairs, all control methodology correspond correct disturbance and ensure system stability. Moreover, this methodology promotes a new error in the steady state except the QPLL. Table 5 shows the settling types. In this result, the table shows the harmonic distortion percentage. The EPLL and QPLL topology show a high filtering capacity. SEOGI has a reduction of a half of harmonics. However, SRF has the worst performance because the classical topology choose does not have a filtering capability. 
Considering the empirical tone and control methodologies, the topology are able to achieve reasonable performance. However, the Zig and Nichols tone and control methodology combined with the SEOGI topology shows better results in comparison with the older approach. This is my acknowledgement and my reference. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tiago, and the submission work's title that I will present is Analysis and Comparison of Bridgeless Septic Topologies Operating in Discontinuous Conduction Mode for Power Factor Correction in Aircraft Power Systems. The Power Factor Correction with con Discontinuous Conduction Mode for a Converter DCM is naturally obtained without the use of complex control loops for the input current, contrary to what happens with continuous conduction mode CCM, enabling just the use of a simple control loop for the output voltage regulation. The SEPI converter presents some advantages for PFC. The bridgeless configuration applied to a converter allows that less diodes of the input rectifier bridge conduct in its input voltage half cycle. Therefore, the conduction losses are reduced and the system efficiency is enhanced. In more electric aircrafts, MEA, the most of mechanical and hydraulic components are replaced for electrical ones, resulting in lighter and reliable aircrafts. In this context, this work aims to compare several topologies of single-phase bridgeless peak converters working in discontinuous conduction mode for power factor correction in the context of AC to DC conversion in more electric aircraft. The SEPIC topologies that will be compared are presented in Figure 1. Each converter presents advantages and disadvantages. Table 1 shows the design specifications that were used for simulation of all converters in PCM software. Table 2 presents the semiconductor models that were added into the PCM device database for simulation of the compared converters. The simulation results of all converters, considering MEAR specifications, are presented in Table 3. The topology 7 in that table is the traditional SEPIC, which was included in the comparison. The topology 1 stands out for MEAR requirements since it provides the lowest input current total harmonic distortion and good efficiency with reduced number of components. Figure 2 shows the waveforms of topology 1. Figure 3 presents the preliminary prototype of topology 1. And figure 4 shows the waveforms of prototypes input voltage and input current for low, for low power load. In this, in this slide, I present the reference that were used for the work. And thank you.
morning. My name is Everson Matos, and I will present this paper with title Robust Optimal Counter Design Procedure Based on Meteoristics for Small Satellite Energy Subsystem. The other authors are René Medic, Lucas Cielo Borin, Caio Ruviário Dantas Osório, Gustavo Guilherme Koch, and Vinicius Foleto Montagnier. Currently, small satellites have become an important platform to academic and aerospace development due to, for instance, their standardization and reduced project and loan costs. This work uh, proposed a control design procedure applied for the voltage regulation of an EPS used in small satellites based on meteoristics to provide robust control, robust and optimal control gains. The topology of the EPS of small satellites used here is shown in figure 1. The circuit can be seen as a butt boost stage and the objective here is to regulate the output voltage across the load. The average state space model can be converted in a transfer function 15 the controller to be used here is a pid with additional pole given in w domain by 16 among several design criteria for pid design here two indices in the frequency domain are chosen a desired value for the crossover frequency and a desired value for the phase emerging. A robust control design example for the converter understood here with uncertain parameters. Consider the parameters given in table 2. To implement the controllers, they are digitalized using the inverse testing transform and the system performance is validated using real-time domain simulation based on hardware in the loop. The simulation are also performed with a pre-tuned controller in 28 to provide a performance comparison. Figure 6 shows the simulation result that the PSO controller lead to a transient response with setting time 43% lower than uh, the one obtained which uh, the pre-tuned controller. The simulation proved the robustness of the controller, ensuring stability and suitable performance. Thank you to Brazilian agencies CAPS and CNPq for the financial support. Thank you for attention. My name is Diego Bruno Chaves. I'm a master's student from Federal University of Santa Maria. And today I present to you this paper titled Modulation Technique for Commode Voltage Reduction and Third Order Component Elimination for a Three Level T Type Inverter. This paper has its co authors Professor Grigoletto from Unipampa and Professor Pinheiro from FSM. So, common mode voltage is an issue in any application. We have standards established limits for electromagnetic interference. And also, common mode voltage can excite current through parasitic components. These parasitic components appear for different reasons depending on the application. We have an illustration of that in motors applications on the right, and on the left, we have an example of that for photovoltaic systems. So, you can decrease or eliminate these currents through filters, some special topologies, and we also can decrease the common mode voltage by itself 
which can be done by modulation structures. <clears throat> in this paper, we're working with the T-type inverter, which is a three-level topology. Considering a space vector modulation strategy applied to the T-type, we have a 19 vectors with 27 different implementations, summarized in the table on the right. The normalized phase voltages are defined by equation 1, and the common mode voltage is defined by equation 2. In the conventional space vector modulation strategy, all vectors are considered in the space vector diagram. Because we are using all vectors and all implementations, in the conventional modulation, we have a lower total harmonic distortion and reduction in the voltage ripple on the capacitors. However, we have a high common mode voltage. The switching sequence illustrated in the figure on right. In the proposed modulation strategy, virtual vectors are created between the small and large vectors, highlighted in red in the figure on left. This will use the common mode voltage and eliminates the low frequency components. The switching sequence is on the right. The figure on right illustrates the TED of the line to line voltage as a function of the modulation index for both strategies. The proposed strategy has higher TED for any modulation index which was expected since you are not using all available vectors. The simulation parameters are summarized in the table on the left. Here we have the simulation results for both strategies. As expected, the proposed strategy has higher TD of the phase current and also higher voltage ripple on the clumped capacitors. Here we have the simulation results for the common mode voltage. In the figure on the bottom, we have the road mean square of the common mode voltage as function of the modulation index. The proposed strategy has lower common mode voltage for any modulation index. In the figures on top, it's visible that the proposed strategy has no other harmonic components. Also, the components in the switching frequency are much lower. To evaluate the harmonic content from common mode voltage, the figures on the left illustrate the individual components. To evaluate the switching frequency sideband components, three variables are created and can be determined by equation 9, 10, and 11. The only components that the proposed modulation has is the sideband components in the switching frequency and the double of the switching frequency. This is the reference used in the presentation. Thank you for your attention. I'm open for questions. Tatiane Martins, I am a doctoral student at the Federal University of Tajuba. I will be updating the article titled No Isolated the CDC Chukibuck Converter for High Step Down Applications. This presentation will be done in three steps Introduction, Proposed Converter, and Simulation Results. Studies on converted with a wide conversion range have intensified in search of topology capable of obtaining important characteristics for an efficient converter without the need for extreme cyclical reasons. In this context, this work presents a single suite Chuck Buck converter for a high step down applications that the input current and the current flowing through the output stage are no pulsating in continuous conductor mode, result in reduced electromagnetic interference levels and minimized filters requirements. Knowing that it is possible to obtain a cascade converter with a single K as long as they share a common node, the cascade to converter was modeled with the, two, the buck converter to obtain the topology with 
on a single suite, the graft scheme technique was used. The optimized converter has three operating diodes, three inductors, three capacitors, a single switch and a load. The Chukibuck converter was designed based on the specifications given in Table 1. Simulations tests were performed in PCM software to validate the whole quantitative analysis, and the results are discussed as follows. Table 2 compares the values obtained from the expressions derived in the mathematical analysis with those calculated by the simulation software. The highest errors occur with the voltage stress on the semiconductors because expressions for calculating the maximum voltages in the diodes and the switch do not take into account the voltage ripples across the filter capacitors. Thank you very much for your attention. Figueiredo, an electrical engineering student at UFS Federal University of Espírito Santo, and this is a proportional integral model predictive control for a back-to-back -back converter based UPS. So, the proposed topology is a three-phase back-to-back converter in which the control scheme is mainly done via MPC, model predictive control, more precisely the discrete domain optimal switching vector MPC. This strategy uses a mathematical model of the system in order to predict the controlled variables possible, va possible values for the next time step, considering the possible switching states of the converter. In our case, the controlled variables are the grid current, the output voltage, and the DC bus voltage. Here we also have the reference sinus calculation loop, in which we use an auxiliary PI that restores the, voltage, the DC bus voltage deviations, and once we have both we introduce the cost functions, a function that compares these predicti predictive equations with their respective reference sinus and applies the switching state that generates the least error to the converter. The UPS simulation under typical distribution grids loads show that during the simulation time, the grid current is synthesized in phase with the grid voltage, which translates into unitary power factor. For all loads tested, the output voltage is also synthesized with proper power quality. We can see the details in the zoomed graphs for each load. The DC bus voltage presents slight transitories, fastly regulated back to nominal voltage. The active and reactive power graphs are also shown alongside the THD table. In a second moment, the UPS is tested with grid disturbances. First, a 50% voltage sag is applied to the grid at one second of simulation, and as we can see, the control senses the voltage variation and demands a higher current from the grid, maintaining the power constant so that there is no significant change on the output waveforms. Then, a highly distorted grid voltage supplies the UPS. Again, the controlled variables are synthesized with proper THD levels, and in both cases the DC bus voltage is kept regulated. So, our conclusions, the grid current, the DC bus voltage and output voltage have been successfully controlled with the MPC with an auxiliary PI. 
We have obtained low THD levels for the controlled variables, meeting the I3E standard 519. We have obtained a high grid power factor, and the load has been protected from, from the grid disturbances on the second simulation. And that's it. We acknowledge FAPS, UFIS, LEPAC, and here are our references, and thanks for watching. Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name is Tatiana Martins. I will present a no isolated CDC chuck bulk converter for high step down application. Okay, now you open for questions. You have any questions for any, any work? Everyone, feel free to have your questions. Yes. Oh. Marinice, I have a question for you. Uh, do you could expand a little more about your frequency variation test? Can you repeat? Please. Uh, could you explain a little more about your frequency variation test? About All right. Work? Yes. I will. I will share my presentation. Yes, that's great. Can, can you see my presentation here? <laughs> so uh, the frequency variation was made with uh, in the region 0.2 second to 0.4 second with a range uh, from 60 Hertz to 55 Hertz. And we obtain as result these uh, chains. And in the first uh, topology, we have these results, this result, and the second topology, this result, and the, the three topology, this, and the four, that's this result. Uh, and in this result, we can observe that the in the first, in the uh, first, second, and we have a similar results uh, with norm, no much oscillations, and the Zig and Nichols showed uh, to be a better response. And in the 30 and 40 results, we have more oscillations, and the worst was the ETAA -E 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 uh, in the the yellow curve because uh, these results we can explain uh, because the uh, because the uh, symptom uh, oh my god how can I say uh, because of the Tony method we see was empirical uh, to better results we can made more those tests and I think that's it. Uh, great, great, thanks. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. One more question? We have, we have made several several tests, but uh, which one you say that is the better, better method? Because you don't, you don't have just one problem in a, in a, in a grid. We can make several problems at the same time. Uh, do you ask me the better result? Yes, the, the best, uh, the best, uh, best control, yeah. best control. You can say that's the better, better one. Okay. Uh, about uh, 
after the four tests, we conclude that the best, better result is uh, SCOGI, PLO, uh, combined with the Zig Nichols method, because in the four tests, they show a good response. Uh, in the voltage sag, uh, frequency variation, phase variation, and uh, harmonic filtering test. Uh, our result uh, uh, response uh, showed a good response because our method was empirical uh, and we not ensure uh, performance. But the SOGI PLL combined with the Nicol method to show it better. And that's it. It's clear, clean, yeah. clear. Yes, yes, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Thiago, uh, please. Could you talk about your preliminary experimental test results? Okay. I will share my presentation on the screen. Yes, thanks. Can you see that? Are you seeing it? Yes. Okay. That was the, the preliminary experiment, experiment. So for preliminary experimental results, we got the the input current waveform and the input voltage waveform, and in the in that exp uh, that, that preliminary experimental results, we just captured the the power factor correction by the topology one. So through the observation of the, the figure four, uh, the it can be see, seen that the power factor correction is obtained for power load, for a power load considering preliminary experimental results. And I will show the, the paper too. So, in the figure 11, I show other, other waveforms, the input voltage, the input current, and the uh, output inductor current with its current variation. And in figure 12, um, I show the, the total harmonic distortion of input current of the topology one. So I we got uh, 2.42% 2 of total harmonic distortion. And in, in future, we can, uh, we can get um, a, a greater load for the power. For, for therefore, getting, we can get a, a greater power load. I don't know if I answered the question properly. Yes, that's great. Uh, any more questions for Thiago, please? I have uh, what, what is this small electric aircraft? What's the difference between what's done nowadays? Because I say that we are going to just have one, one place to do all the control of the electronics. That's this. Oh, uh, so the my well, our work um, with. In our work, we talk about the more electric aircraft concept, so the MEA concept. This concept uh, 
this concept encompasses the the constant electrification of the the systems of the air, the of the aircraft of the conventional aircraft so the the systems the conventional systems like the like the hydraulic systems and other conventional systems of the conventional aircraft are are uh, are nowadays are 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 being um, replaced by the electrical systems. So the co the converters of power electronics uh, are being more used for this for this new system of for electric of aircrafts. So is a replacement for the for the the can, how can I say replacements for uh, the the form of the energy in these new aircraft in these new aircrafts? So the processing of the the processing of energy is 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 becoming more electric. Okay, this will make you make the aircraft more more like uh, not, not too heavy. Do you do? Uh, can you repeat your question, please? You are substituting uh, the hydraulic parts, which are electronic, just to make it to, to vary the aircraft. Key. Maybe yes. It's, it's, it's more, oh, just forgot the word. Is the, the aircraft becomes more lighter. Mm, light, light. And the systems become, the system become more, more safe too. It's another advantage of the this concept really? called more electric aircraft. But uh, if you're, like I said, your the central part fail, you, you lost everything. This this is the problem. You see, this is safer. This. Yeah, the the papers that the the papers about this concept shows that the electric the electric systems are more are more safe than the traditional systems and in this work we presented just um, a comparison between a specific converter the SEPI converter for processing this energy inside of the aircraft okay No more questions. Thanks, Thiago. Thank you. Yeah. Everson, uh, could you talk about your design example and about your results, please? OK. Uh, that's the presentation. Uh, you can see yes okay uh, about the design the design uh, it's a buck boost uh, it's a, a like a buck boost converter uh, in fact, this is a, a EPS um, for a small satellite. And uh, here, in this point, we have a, a PV, a photovoltaic panel. But uh, we, we present uh, only the stage of the um, sunlight, uh, sunlight, no, no uh, the eclipse. Period. In the eclipse period, uh, we have only battery, uh, and this topology uh, is uh, uh, is capable to uh, to regulate the voltage of the load. Uh, Everson. Yes. 
Uh, please, is possible you put in a full screen? Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, thanks. Oh my God, uh, I I need to change the. No, no. The, then the, no, that's okay. Then. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, well, mm, then this uh, is the battery, and uh, here is loads of the uh, hurt the battery in the satellite uh, is very in, in eclipse period is very cold. Uh, then and you need, uh, we need a resistor of the hurt the battery. Um, and uh, we have the capacitor. We we regulate the voltage um, in the loads. We uh, regulate the voltage of these two capacitors. Uh, that's it in, in the prototype uh, circuit. And the result. Well, uh, here we have the step. Uh, step variation in the reference, the voltage reference of the load. Uh, we can see that this uh, uh, operates of uh, uh, we we have uh, um, phase uh, no min uh, phase no minimum no minimum. Uh, as, um, Transfer function. It, it's possible we see that, that, that that's it. And uh, in the other results, um, the fewer seven, we have a, a, a response of uh, a step variation of the load in, in a closed loop, uh, uh, in a closed loop uh, circuit. Um, a variation uh, f input variation the this uh, s uh, from uh, 5.5.5.4 uh, to 8.4 and uh, in this figure figure a uh, the resist load is a uh, 30 ohms and the uh, figure B the resist load is a uh, 50 uh, a half net have uh, uh, 15 uh, ohms. Uh, we can see the, the comparison comparison uh, in the channel one. We have the P PSO, the, the the proposal controller, and uh, in uh, blue uh, green. Uh, I f I think green green uh, color. It's this this position. Uh, we have a, a PID PID uh, turning uh, UZ pig tuning or from MATLAB. Then this this a comparison these two controller. No? Uh, I think this uh, I don't know if you have more questions more. I have one. Have you thought using other motoristic for the optimization yes. for the, oh, the games? We use P yes, you, you, we use PSO. Uh, PSO is a uh, um, PSO. PSO is a motoristic uh, based on uh, um, how do you say? Um, Social, social, uh, uh, social, uh, social things. I suppose. Yeah. 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 Particles, animals, things like this. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. But have you thought to use another, other, other methods to compare? No, no, no. In in the future, maybe. But uh, PSO have a, a algorithm. Uh, we need more better results than, but we we can choose in this paper. 
Okay. Thank you. Mm, I have the question for Shago, I think, from YouTube. Okay. Yes, the experimental results are, were obtained with uh, uh, pure, sinusoidal, pure sinusoidal voltage in the input, like uh, I sh I show it in the in my my presentation. Just, I will share my presentation again. Just a minute. So this is the waveform of the input voltage for the, the consider a converter and the, the power converter that was chosen is accomplishing the power factor correction. So the, the input current and input voltage are in phase. Any more You're questions? Yes, it's okay, Fernando. Thank you for the question, Fernando. Diego. Diego, uh, Please, uh, you could could you show your simulation results? Yeah, of course. Just a minute. Thanks. So we have two sections of simulation results. We have the simulation results about the differential voltage and the common mode voltage. So. Which one? Uh, the both, please. Okay. I can't show both at the same time, so maybe you do the questions about this one. Oh, yes, the, uh, please could this, this uh, first simulation. Yes, this first. Okay. Could you talk about it? Yeah, of course. So uh, what you can say about the simulation results? Uh, the common mode voltage, the, sorry, the conventional space vector modulation uses all the available vectors of the, the inverter. So because of that, you have a better PWM partner and therefore you have a, a better harmonic distortion in the currents, etc. And the proposed modulation strategy, the, it doesn't use all the available vectors. We use special vectors as, as I showed before with the purpose to reduce the common mode voltage. So of course, because of that, we have a worse PWM partner and therefore a worse phase current. And that is also affects the, the voltage on the complete capacitors. Uh, the fact that it affects the voltage capacitors are not very easy to explain, but, but anyway, if you want, I can give you some details about that later. And the common mode voltage, the purpose of this modulation strategy is to eliminate the low voltage components. These components at three times the, the fundamental frequency, six times of the fund fundamental frequency, etc. Because these components are very bad in certain special applications. So as you can see, the proposed modulation strategy doesn't have these components. So it's working, right? <laughs> and we are also reducing this uh, these components at the switching frequency. You can see that in a conventional modulation strategy, we have these components much more higher than the proposed strategy. So what is happening here is basically we are getting a better partner in terms of common mode voltage, but at the price to get a worse partner in terms of uh, differential voltage, okay? So depending on the application, this modulation strategy will be not good but in applications where you have to consider the common mode voltage like photovoltaic systems or motors, maybe there is a place for that, okay? 
Any other question? Great, thanks. In Dumbay, question another time. You have a question for Chiao again, I think, from YouTube. Okay. Uh, what is the question, please? Or I can open here. Uh, why do you have so many inductors in the prototype? Oh, okay. In the, proto the prototype, we use uh, the EMI filtering on the input because uh, in many, in many MEA converters, this filter is used, but uh, it's not necessary. Just we use it just because that filter, uh, the filter is filter was there, but because the in, in more in more electric aircraft co uh, converters, this future is present, but is not. It must and must and be must and be 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 here. Must and be in, in the converter. Sorry. It's just a EMI filtering. Future. Okay. I have a question for Diego and Bernardo. Why, why the simulations you post the grid, the grid frequency 50 hertz? Because in Brazil, we work with 60. Um, okay. Uh, in my case, it's just because it's easier in terms of uh, simulation. Like, what, what I can say about that? Let's suppose that, that I use uh, 10 kilohertz uh, switching frequency. So if I divide 10 kilohertz switching frequency by 60, we don't have an uh, integer number. Right, and there is some simulation problems about that in Simulink, at least in MATLAB. So if I'm using uh, 50 hertz, uh, it's a bit we have a higher speed in terms of simulation. But in terms of results, this doesn't change much. You know, it's not a big deal. Just because of that. Yeah, uh, for me, it's it's uh, just the same. Uh, with with 60 hertz uh, it's more difficult to uh, to design the filters and because one over 60 is uh, an infinite uh, tight né? and one over one over 60 sorry one, and one over 50 is just a round number so it makes uh, it, it easier in some aspects of the simulation, but in terms of results, doesn't affect uh, that much. The gains you change because of the frequency or not of your control. Sorry. The gains of your control gonna change because of the frequency or not? Uh, I don't think Instead so. Of, I, the I same. I'm not completely sure, but but. I don't think maybe a bit, but not not considerable. But I don't know. Like there are some coins like Japan that work with both. How are you going to set these gains if this change depends of the frequency? Okay, I understand your question right now. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that depends of the control you're using. Like I'm using a D key um, coordinates, right? So I take the angle from from the grid and put it in my control. So independent of the frequency of the control, my, this system the PLL will change the angle. So in my case, I think that it would be work. But if I use a PR control, yes, definitely would change, right? I have to change the frequency. I didn't get the the, the question, sorry. Because if you change the frequency, it's going to change your control or your control will work depending on the frequency of the grid? Sorry, I, I still didn't get it. Uh, you said the control, uh, your gain of the control, all the parameters of your control, based of frequency or not? Because uh, here in Brazil, work with 60, Paraguay work with 50, some places oh, work with more. Oh, in my case, it doesn't change because uh, because I used the the OSV MPC, the optimal switching vector, which uses uh, only parameters of the of this system and uh, measured values so the frequency doesn't 
really affect the game or in order the control the control strategy. Maybe there is a problem about performance. I understand that in, in terms of game, but in terms of frequency, we don't have that because of the D key coordinators. And even if there is that, it's just a small change that I have to do in the project, which is not like a big deal. You know what I mean? Yes, but like you, in the market, we have we work with both frequencies. It's going to be a problem or not? That's a point problem. Mm, I don't think that is a huge problem. As I say, maybe there is a problem about a performance, but definitely the inverter will work as well. Like maybe they they would take a, a slightly bit more time to to react to change in the current and phase current, but definitely we have zero uh, error because of the D key coordinates. If if I if I using uh, alpha beta coordinates, maybe that that would be a problem definitely. But with the key coordinates, I don't think so. Yeah, because I don't know if you know, but Japan work with both with sixty and fifty. I don't know how they manage this there. I understand. I, I think maybe with these, the key coordinates, I think, or a control that identifies first the frequency and then using one type of, of PR or another type. I don't think that is like a huge problem, but, but I understand mm -hmm. the concern. OK. Thanks. Thanks, Diego. Thanks, Bernard. Tatiana, could you talk about your quantitative analysis and after that about your simulation results, please? Is in a, you are in a mute mode, yes. Could you enter your question in Portuguese? Ok. Vou é... explicar uh, um pouquinho sobre a sua análise quantitativa e sobre seus, uh, seus resultados da sua simulação. You could speak... Uh, yes, yes, you could speak in Portuguese. Thank you. É... Vou abrir pelo artigo, acho que está o equacionamento melhor, né? Inicialmente a gente calculou por integral, né? E pelos índices de integral, calculamos aí é, através desse equacionamento e obtemos aí as tensões, né? Inicialmente as tensões dos capacitores, logo em seguida o ganho, né? E, e os resultados, é, o que você gostaria de ver? Você, você consegue Seria compartilhar sua, sua tela? É. Não está compartilhando? Não, achei que está isso. Faria. Desculpa, achei que estava compartilhando. Agora está, né? Sim. Isso. Eu abri o artigo... É a análise quantitativa que você quer, né? Isso mesmo, por favor. Seria a análise quantitativa? Ah, tá ali. É, é, é isso mesmo. Isso. Então, aqui a gente usou, né, por integral, para calcular aí, é, o ganho de tensão, né? Logo depois a gente obteve aí as tensões nos capacitores é, e através dos, da manipulação matemática a gente conseguiu obter os, o ganho, né? Que seria a tensão de saída pela tensão de entrada d ao quadrado dividido por menos d. Como conversor é o conversor 
Turkbank, então ele teria o ganho de ambos os convensores, né? uma multiplicação entre o, com o ganho do convensor Chuck com o convensor Buck, e aí a gente tem aí o, o ganho né, de ambas as topologias, obtendo aí o ganho de D ao quadrado sobre o menos D. É, logo em seguida, determinamos aí por equacionamento né, as indutâncias, o, o, as capacitâncias, né, e para finalizar, os esforços de tensão nos semicondutores e de corrente. Seria isso? Sim, sim, obrigado. E sobre os seus resultados? Naquela parte que você tem é de é, simulation results? Vou abrir isso aqui. Tá. E aí depois sobre fi, é, figura Seria 4, é, explicar um pouquinho só. Da figura 4? É, é, sobre as figuras 4, sim, sim. Do slide ou do, do, do slide? É, do artigo, do slide. se você tiver lá no slide, é da melhor forma. Isso. Vai ser diferente. Oh. É porque aqui os, os resultados... Essa tabela? Tá ótimo. É, é a figura, mostra a figura lá. A do, a do slide. Sim. Do slide, essa. Assim, essa. É, só os... É, não, as figuras com sinais que você, você tem... Você quer os valores... É, é, a ah, figura, é, os é, exatamente. Tá, os gráficos. Isso, Ótimo, então, peraí, isso, eu vou abrir aí. na outra simulação maior... Porque nela tem o, o, os, os gráficos, as simulações, né? Então, aqui a gente tem o... Nessa... nessa Ótimo, de isso. De forma correta. Então, nessa, nessas formas de onda aqui, a gente tem os, o, as formas previstas, né? É o que a gente prevê. Só um minutinho. Isso o que a gente prevê de resultado pra, pra... após a simulação, né? E aí os resultados, que eu acho que é isso aqui, não sei o que, nós temos aqui, inicialmente, acho que está ruim, né? Demora para vocês uh. aparecerem, porque eu estou acompanhando Sim. pelo YouTube também, o que eu apresento ah, no meu ah, computador. Agora não aparece... Não acompanha não, vocês, porque né? tem uns 10 segundos de atraso. É, tem um delay, é, é. melhor não acompanhar, tá? É, você só olha aqui mesmo nessa, porque ela tem um delayzinho. E aí, por isso que ah, dá esse tá. som também, sabe quando dá um retorninho de leve? Uhum. Né? Então, só... Mas aí só dá para vocês verem, né? Dá, dá para ver. Aí você consegue ampliar um pouquinho. Consegue? Isso. Dá um zoomzinho. Sim. Isso. Aqui. Tá, ótimo. Isso, né? Sim. Isso, então aqui Sim. na figura 4 a gente tem o sinal obtido é, nas correntes, né? É, IL1, IL2, IL3, onde a gente observa que nenhuma das correntes passa por zero, ou por zero, então a gente caracteriza o modo de condução contínuo, né? É, na figura 2 nós temos aí as tensões médias no capacitor, né, em C1, C2 e C0, que é o capacitor de saída, então ele vai estar aí aproximadamente 50, menos 50 volts, que é o que a gente espera obter, de acordo com o que foi projetado. Logo em seguida, nós temos aqui os resultados de corte de tensão é, no MOSFET, onde o que a gente percebe que a tensão máxima no nosso interruptor ele é cerca de 600 volts, para uma corrente aí de mais ou menos de pico de 2.2 aproximadamente. E é, quando a gente apresenta aqui os resultados da estrutura do conversor, 
o Chuck Buck, ele possui, pode trabalhar tanto no modo elevador quanto no modo abaixador. Porém, quando, por estudos que nós fizemos, ele trabalha melhor no, como abaixador, porque com ele, como elevador, os esforços de tensão nos semicondutores são muito elevados. Então, é, o ideal, assim, para ter o um, um melhor é, resultado é que ele trabalhe como abaixador. Então, aí nós temos é, os resultados né, dos, dos diodos apenas D1, D2 e D4, e o diodo D3, é, ele não, não conduz corrente em nenhuma das operações, porque a estrutura inicial, ela possui quatro diodos, porque nós utilizamos a técnica Great Scanner. Então, inicialmente, a, a estrutura do conversor, né, ele teria aí dois, interru é, dois interruptores, só que otimizando a nossa, vou voltar aqui só para mostrar, como a gente otimizou a nossa estrutura, a gente passou até apenas é, três, indutor, três diodos, porque o diodo D3 que fica aqui, ele não conduz quando o conversor está em modo abaixador, por isso que ele não está aqui na figura. E aí, para finalizar, são os resultados mesmo os numéricos, né, calculados e simulados. A gente observa aí que nós temos resultados bem próximos e aonde o resultado não é, tem um, uma, uma, uma certa diferença, é no caso aqui, por exemplo, nas tensões máximas, né, dos semicondutores, o que ocorre é que na hora de fazer os cálculos não foi considerado, além da, da, do valor da tensão máxima, o valor das ondulações de tensão. Mas se esses valores forem considerados, você obtém valores bem mais próximos ao simulado. Seria isso? Sim, obrigado, viu? De nada, obrigado. Alguém tem mais questões? Uh, so sorry. There are any more questions? Sim. Uh, question for Bernardo in your results. Check which figure is. And the figure nine, your input they don't have no any, you know, any noise, but your output have some noise. What's this? Why this happened? Sorry, uh, could you repeat, the, please? In the input in the beginning to, I think one, what's the, to uh, the, the time step one, you don't have any. Any noise in the input, but your output has a lot of noise of the of the voltage. In which figure? Sorry, figure nine. Figure nine. Figure nine. Uh, let me open up here. So, why does the the output have uh, noise is this your yes, question noise. yes because it, like in the beginning you don't have any problem in your your grid after time stamp one you start to have some some problem so why oh. do you have some noise in the beginning in your output oh okay so uh, this is the the voltage sag test we we we've done so in one second of simulation uh, we applied to the rectifier a 50% voltage sag. Uh, in this moment, the... Sorry? Bernard, could you put your uh, presentation, please? Okay, okay, sorry. I'll share my, my screen. Yes, yes, thanks, sorry. Can you? Okay, okay. Let me present here. Okay, so uh, 
we are talking about this this figure here the left one so in one second of simulation we applied a, a 50 percent voltage sag uh, to the to the converter and this is an atypical a typical situation like uh i think uh 50 percent sag is very very would be very rare uh, to happen so it's most like a, a transitory or a transitory fault or something like this but it's very a very huge sag 50 percent so uh the control senses the sag and at one second it starts to demand a, a higher current as we can see there to to keep the power constant the output power so uh, the, this little noise is it's is common because of because of this uh, kind of operation like during this fault but if we but we've done the fast uh, Fourier transformer and it's the, the THD levels are within uh, the the standard so it's under five percent still that's it is this what okay okay may I stop uh, sharing you should get me stopped Diego, you could talk to Edson about uh, what are you thinking about the uh, Edson question. Yes, I'll uh, just actually think about that before. The paper from Ma Marinice, is that right? Uh, she showed that depending on the PLL, we have a good performance changing between 60 hertz to 50 hertz, right? the PLL response. So I think you ask me if there is any problem about these different frequencies in countries that have both of them. I think that the PLL are prepared to to this variation. Uh, it's not a huge problem. But that I was thinking about that. But the PLL have to respond correctly about this variation. You know? Okay. Is that all right? Marinis, do you think about it? Uh, think about my results. I think it, that's no problem because uh, when I change in my with my control metho methodologies, I have no problem. Thanks, Marinis. Feel free to ask any questions about the papers. Edson, there are any more questions? We don't have any more questions. And uh, the authors want to talk about uh, uh, the papers. 
one specific part about your papers that was not possible to show in the short video. Thanks. Okay. Uh, can I say something? Yes, of okay, course, Miranda. It's, it's just that uh, it's not it's nothing about my my work or something. It's just that this is the first uh, congress that I participate, and uh, unfortunately, we are not like in the same room and seeing each other in person. Uh, and talking to each other in person as as I I, I wish uh, yeah, I wish but it's very cool to to participate and and have this experience here and I hope uh, things get better soon yeah, so we can uh, gather and get together again yes but you 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 was very good, Bernard, for your first congress. That's uh, very good. Everyone was good. Uh, the thing is not be nervous. Then everything will be OK. When you are presenting, when some people get some questions, uh, everything will be OK. It's not to be nervous. Then the thing is uh, uh, there is no problem. Okay. Uh, I agree, and, I agree. Yes, because this is the first Congress for us. Uh, the first virtual Congress was not too easy to do this. It's more easy to do a real Congress. But here we are a, a lot of problem because there are some sounds, external sounds. Uh, there are a lot of things you need to take care. Yes. But uh, we will stay waiting for the youth and for everyone in this next Congress. And sure, we will in the person. Yes, because uh, they will be finished. Uh, there are some comments. Uh, after post-conference Congress, we'll have post-conference activity. We will edit uh, special issues in pre-international journals, IPP a transaction on industrial applications, Polytechnica from Springer, and machines from MDPI. Our papers must be expanded or totally new with a different title, and at last one common author with the paper published at Induscom. We will send invitations to the authors related to the journals. Uh, it's okay. After that, we will send uh, some emails about uh, these journals, and uh, you can be publish some expanded articles. Yes. Well, there is no more tension. Everybody can talk about uh, no, not about uh, some question or about uh, what do you think uh, about this uh, this con this virtual congress. That could be about the papers. Marinisi, what do you think about it? Um, I'm thinking that's good. I'm so ner nervous. Uh, my first congress virtually, but uh, I'm present other work in the congress in my university, uh, Federal University of Amazonas. Uh, ideas was uh, international too, and I'm so nervous too, even. Uh, in this context, doesn't does it uh, change anything? Uh, but I'm happy because I'm try and I can do this, and uh, apparently is fine, is good, and I'm I'm continuous nervous, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
and and thank you for everyone uh, thank you for the questions and and thank you for my group at uh, controls that helped me a lot and i think that it's oh thanks Anissa. everson please okay uh, um, it's my first two <laughs> but uh, i will uh, thanks for for the uh, this this presentation, this opportunity, and uh, that's it. I uh, only thank you for 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 us for for everybody. Thank oh, you. Great, thank you, Everson. Tiago, please. Okay, and that was my my first congress too, and I I am happy for this opportunity to present my my work. And I would like to thank all of you, the chairs, all the questions that were made for me. And that was a very good experience. Thank you. And I would like to thank to my, my colleagues from my, from my university, the Federal University of Uberlândia. Thank you for the support. Oh, thanks, thanks. Diego, please. So I just would like to say that this virtual form is good and bad in some aspects. I think that the good part is that independent of your position, you can come here and have a good talk and, and show you your results, your research. So that is very positive. And the bad aspect is that we don't see each other face to face, right? That is a completely different sensation. But that is a good experience. And I, I think that considering uh, how expensive it is in these days to travel to the other side of the country. These forms could be more, uh, could happen more often, in my opinion. But I just would like to say that, that the Congress is really good and I, I really appreciate all the presentations and, and everything that has happened. Thank you. Oh, well, thanks. Tachi, could you talk a little more? That chairman yeah. has moved. Uh... Uh, yes. Uh, repeat, please. Ah. Could you talk about uh, what do you think about the Congress? You feeling about this? Uh, this is my first own Congress and English is to a pro problem for me, but I, I said from the nervousness, it was very useful. Thank you. Thanks for everyone's attention. No, but you was great. Don't worry. It's everything okay. Yes, thanks. Bernardo, could you talk again? And you say that very great, uh, very great words, Bernardo. Well, uh, thanks. I just like to, I would just like to to thank everybody again and everyone who watched and present their works here. Uh, it's it's a good opportunity to get to know other subjects, other other people also and. I think that's that's uh, very important in our formation. So thanks everyone, and I hope uh, we, as I said, I hope we can get together soon again. Thanks, Renato. You are Sorry. in the yes. Sorry. Well, now I have the moment questions in this section. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for everybody. And uh, see you in the next Congress. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.
Bye bye. Bye.